Here you see uh, Phil and Chris taking the bikes down to technical inspection or scrutineering. Chris with the red t-shirt on and uh, Phil with the white t-shirt on. Oh no, sorry, he hasn't got a t-shirt on. Signing on and checking that the leathers and helmets and so on are up to specification. And of course getting the bikes weighed and sound checked before going out onto the track. It was my first ride back having broken my thumb. I was in quite a lot of pain. I had a, a pin taken out of my, the base of my thumb only two days before and I was in a lot of pain. So I bought a massaging machine to try and give me some relief. <laughs> I've been complaining of the clutch being heavy. It was either that or my hand was so weak having been in plaster cast for three or four weeks. So Phil tried us, uh, to get us a new clutch cable, but it was no better than the one which was on the bike, so we decided to leave it. They were actually sharing an awning with a Kiwi rider, Jason Easton. He'd come over from New Zealand and was one of the TIGCRAFT supported riders. Really nice bloke. He was riding effectively the same machine as I was, so we had quite a bit of information we could uh, transfer from one to another. He'd not been to Bruno before, so I was trying to give him some idea as to where we were going and so on. As you can see here, the tracks or the, the paddocks still slightly damp and the track was the same, but the choice was slicks because it was drying out very rapidly. bike here is, uh, was a 916 with one of the cylinders taken off. Quite an unusual machine, rather heavy though, but beautifully turned out. We were struggling right from the off with a misfire on the bike. We seem to have this problem all year and a certain part of last year. It comes and goes and comes and goes, but it was back here at Brunel. With Bruno being very fast on some of the long corners where you're trying to keep your momentum up through the, through the corner. And the bike had cut out halfway through the corner then come back on song again. And uh, it was very, very problematic. stop here, the uh, bell mouth had fell off the carburetor. Not exactly a usual happening, but with the vibration of the single, strange things do happen and you have to keep on top of them all the time. So I'm just beavered away to get the machine sorted out. <laughs> at the Harrogate Hospital have been very, very obliging and they've managed to rig up a detachable cast so in between the sessions they could put the cast back on to try and give them hand maximum support. Phil so at this point was still convinced it was a carburation problem. We'd been messing around with the carburation for quite a while, which is particularly irritating because one minute it would seem to go after fiddling with the carburetor, but as it turned out, it wasn't the carburetor because it would uh, just come back with a vengeance as fast as it would go. Very irritating. Phil was determined to try and get it sorted out, so I took the bike up and down the pit lane and the paddock to uh, try and simulate what it was like under load. This is us just getting ready to go out for the first on-time session. This is actually the 426 machine, which we had as a backup bike. It's been extremely reliable. It's a fantastic machine. The wives were out colluding together. And they're near shops. Oh. Nothing.
One of my old mechanics from the, my old days with V and M racing, Paul Morris, had lent me his gloves and I had to use the left hand glove because he has much bigger hands than me, so my hands were still quite badly swollen and I couldn't get my original gloves on. Hence I've got one black glove and one white and red glove. Clutch control was still an issue because I had very, very little strength in my left hand. session and straight away we were struggling with this misfire again. We decided, due to the nature of the weather being the way it was, even though it was bright sunny here, it was threatening rain all the time, so we decided to do some fast laps on the 426, just to give us a comparable time against the 450. So to make sure that the 426 was set up right, just in case we needed it for the race. Even though the tyre warmers had been on the 426, the motor was still cold, so we had to spend a minute or two getting it up to temperature. The worst thing you can do now is go out on a cold engine and try and put some fast laps on, so we have to get the temperature up a little bit. Out in practice, I'd uh, managed to scare Stefan Minus, so I went over to uh, apologise, and he was cool about it because it wasn't a big problem at the end of the day. Stefan and I had been playing cat and mouse all year because we're on pretty much identical machines. So as I was about to go out here, Stefan was desperate to get out with us. just before getting the bike fired up after we'd been playing around with it and we noticed that the clutch was starting to develop a problem a bit. it was as if the free play of the clutch had been uh, all used up prelude to fit the things which were going to go wrong later in the weekend with this machine adjusted on the top of the motor looked like it had wound itself right off which is very strange because it had been uh, pretty trouble free for most of its most of its life really because the mini monos are so compact and where the position in a bit is it's extremely difficult to get to just adjusting the tick over so once again we've had the carb off and we disturbed the tick over screw so we're just picking the tick over up a little bit to take it up to about two and a half to three thousand rpm it all helps to stop the wheel from locking under heavy braking
about to test the clutch just to give it uh, a few decent dabs to make sure that it was functioning before we went out. start of the first race on Saturday after about three or four laps there was a pretty big crash and uh, they'd stopped the race, red flag didn't stop the race so everyone had to go back to the pit lane until uh, the problem was sorted out. As we'd only done three or four laps it's fair to say that it was going to be a fairly either long second half of the race if it was aggregate times. So we decided to play no uh, or take no chances and refill the bike. As it turned out, uh, Peds came down. He's the UK organizer for the Super European Supermono, and he told us about um, what the organizer came up with, and it was a complete race from scratch all over again. This is the uh, trying to get the bike started. I knew something was wrong here to be fair. The clutch seemed to be dragging and was quite problematic. Now it's onto the sighting map for a restart. But by the time I got back to the start finish line, getting ready for the warm up lap, the bike stalled on the line as I had absolutely no clutch left. Something had gone horribly wrong with, with the clutch. So I had to go and collect the 426 quickly in the pit lane, get it warmed up, and start the warm up lap from the pit lane. Marshall's refusing to let us go out until the last rider had come past on the warm-up lap. And to aggravate matters even more, when I got back to the start line ready for the start of the race, they wouldn't let me resume my grid position and I had to start the race, the first race, from the very, very back row of the grid and was 53 riders on the grid. It was an awful long way from the start-finish line, so I must have been 100 yards behind before the start. This is the holding pen after the end of the race. Really tough race, I was pretty exhausted. I had a few problems as well. The rear suspension was squatting a lot in, in the race. Something I'd never really suffered with the 426. It was normally as sweet as a nut. I think it may have been a part problem with the fact that we'd not been to Bruno before, so I'd had no base settings to use. And also with my left hand being um, very sore, I couldn't carry weight through it, so I was working the right hand handlebar quite a lot, trying to change direction and so on.
Sinatra explaining about me being sent right to the back of the grid. Spring Lane, are you looking at the highest point? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah, yeah.
Jason hadn't been there before, in fact he hadn't been to Europe full stop, so he had no suspension set up or anything to go off, so I was trying to help him. He was having a problem with the front, and Bruno is a bit like that. You've got to have, if the front isn't working for you at Bruno, you're, you're in a lot of trouble. So he was trying different tyres, different front tyres, trying to find something which worked. He tried the slightly harder compound of tyre, which I had done in practice as well. I wasn't happy with it really. It didn't feel to have quite the feel which the softer or the medium compound tyre, which we normally run, had. The medium compound was tearing up fairly quickly, so it was a bit of a gamble whichever way he went. With the minor problems we'd had in with the 426 destroyed a back tyre in the first race, which is really unusual. So I was a little um, concerned that the rear shock or the rear linkage was either sticking or had a problem, so we decided to investigate and pull the suspension apart to make sure that everything was tickety-boo. Oh, okay. <laughs> I wasn't yeah. going to say anything, but now you mentioned it. Yeah. Well, I'm going to go. Yeah. Well, the best place I've had. See what I mean? Like, just in front of that, yeah. And then, when it's Does that reach or not? That's not too short. No, it can't. Any time in that part would be, it was just, it compresses and then goes, it, it seems to, like, lock up. What I want to do is just see if it's in the, if it's in the shop. We also had to put new bearings in. Too small. Right, here we go, we're off to the, the second race. This was now definitely damage limitation, we did the best job we can on the 46. actually held up quite well really but I uh, was just had just weak and couldn't push very much on the bars. Thank God it wasn't a super bike otherwise I'd never been able to ride it. And off the start of the second race. to finish another third, same results as uh, the first race. Was that controllable? We rode really hard and struggled to get past Stefan. We were both catching Mark Laws on the last few laps and if Stefan had just carried on pushing, we'd have got up to him and it would have been a very interesting last lap. But two laps to go, he just gave up the chase. Unfortunately, I was expecting him to not do that, and tactically, I was a bit stumped. Yeah? Yeah. One, two, three, it's back as the same as the first race. All in all, not a bad job. <laughs>